Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today we're making another bag, of course. Are you guys sick of me making bags? Because I can go and make some clothes or something else instead. Let me know. Uh, today's project is another bag. We've, we're making our own handles today. We've got a recessed zip in at the top. I'll show you how to do that. On the inside, we've got a center pocket with a big zippered opening and on one side of the lining we've got another small pocket as well and we've got box corners uh, and I think that's about it. We're using quilting cotton today. I have gone and quilted the outer fabric but I forgot to hit record in the section where I showed you how to quilt. I've got lots of other videos showing you how to quilt fabric so in this one that's the only thing that's missing. So stick around while I show you how to make this fully lined bag with zips and pockets and all sorts of things. All right, we have quite a few things that we need for this particular bag. This is my outer fabric and you can see that I've already gone and quilted it. For the outer fabric and the lining and the fusible on all four pieces, we want 43 by 34 centimeters or 17 by 13 and a half inches. So it's two pieces for the outer fabric, two pieces for the lining, and then four pieces of fusible. The fusible product that I'm using today is called Parlan. You can really use anything you like. Uh, I'm using a very thin one here, and I rarely wish I had anything thicker, but today I would have liked something a little bit thicker than this. So if you do have something that's a little bit thicker, that would be really nice for the outer fabric. We have an inside pocket which will go on one side of the lining that's 30 by 19 centimeters or 12 by seven and a half inches. For that we also want a piece of interfacing that is 14 by 17 centimeters or five and a half by six and three quarter inches. The interfacing I'm using for this and again it doesn't matter which type you use this is a cotton interfacing, so it's probably a medium weight. It's really just to give the pocket a little bit of body. We're having a recessed zip in the top of the bag. So we want two pieces of fabric for the lining and then two pieces for the outer fabric. Four by 33 centimeters or one and a half by 13 inches. So that's two each of those. And fused to the back, we want two pieces of the lightweight palin or parlan, two by 31 centimeters or three quarter by 12 and a quarter inches. For the zip, you want about 40 centimeters or 16 inches. And then we need a little tab for the zip, which is five by seven centimeters or two by two and a half inches. For the center pocket, you'll want two pieces of outer fabric and two pieces of lining that are 25 by 35 and a half centimeters or 10 by 14 inches. And you'll also want two pieces of fusible fleece for the outer fabric, which are 23 by 33 and a half centimeters or nine and a quarter by 13 and a quarter inches. I have a confession to make. When I was cutting out all the fabric for this, I cut my fabric out too short. So what I've done is cut another strip of fabric, a little bit bigger than what I needed. And I've sewn that on using the seam allowance of one centimeter that I'll be using for this bag. And then I've also cut an extra bit of parlan and I'll be fusing that to the side of the fabric. So the first thing I did was sew the extra piece on. Both edges of the seam have been pressed away from this fusible. I place another piece over the top and I am going to overlap that a little bit. I'll fuse that together. Then I'll trim the whole thing back to the size that I need. And this is what I've got here. So once I've overlapped the edge here, fused it all properly again, I have just gone and done a top stitch right down here just to make sure that the uh, fusible doesn't give way. Nobody's ever going to notice this little design feature. So that's how you fix a mistake when you don't cut properly. We still need a zip for this pocket and the zip size we need is around about 26 centimeters or 12 and a half inches. For that, we'll also need a couple of tabs which will be the width of the zip. In my case, it's four by nine centimeters or one and a half by three and a half inches. Now we have everything sorted, we can get started. Now, because I'm quilting this fabric, I want my outer fabric and the fusible to be a little bit bigger than the size that I've already given you. So when you cut this fabric out, just cut it out about half an inch or so 
wider all the way around and that will allow for the fabric to be pulled in or distorted when you quilt it and if you haven't done so already take both your outer fabric pieces and your lining fabric pieces and iron your stabilizer to the back of your fabric for the side pocket you want to fold that in half then place your interfacing on one half of the fabric and fuse that that's just going to sit nice and flat like that and with your center pocket you want to grab your stabilizer and fuse that to the wrong side of both pieces here I have the fabric that we're going to use for our handles I've got my four inch wide piece of fabric and I've got my half sized piece of fusible fleece I folded the fabric in half then I folded the raw edges in and in again and I've gone and pressed all of this without putting the fusible on first because I wanted to set my outside creases once I did that I had these creases along here and I could center my fusible fleece all the way across the entire piece of fabric so that it sits in between that crease and then I've just folded the fabric back over folded that together again then I've gone back to my heat press and fused all of the layers together I didn't cut enough extra for the end but I'm sure I'll have enough I've already taken care of that with my handles I will set that aside for the time being for the recessed zip you want to grab your small bits of stabilizer fuse that to the wrong side of the outer fabric let's set everything else aside and we'll work on the two center pocket pieces we need to put a zip in this right along the top and we also want to have some zipper tabs on there grab one of your pocket pieces my seam allowance is one centimeter from the outside edge to here I may not have cut my stabilizer at quite the right size but that's not going to cause any problems from there I want to have a tab on the end of my zip so if I measure from the outside edge three centimeters or one and a quarter inches and I do that on both sides this here will be the area where you can actually see the zip this outside line here is my seam allowance the length of my zip can be anything from here to here I've made my zip about one centimeter longer than I need on each side you want to make sure that you've got your zip pull on at this stage if you don't then you're not going to have a zip that works and where I've made that mark here I'm going to transfer that onto my zip and take your tab fold that in half with right sides facing and place the end of your zip over the fold and we're going to take this to the machine and sew from one side to the other right where that yellow line is which you can see just there at the other end I'll do the same fold those edges in fold that in half those yellow lines that I've made there should line up with my lines I've made just here I'll quickly go and sew that in place now okay the end of my zip has been enclosed push the fabric away from the zip and you can see the zip lines up here with that mark and also along here with that mark that we've made so now that we've got our tabs made we can attach the zip to our center pocket so grab your lining as well now I've marked the center of my fabric where I'll be putting the zip and I've also marked the center of my zip I'll run some double sided tape along the top and then place my zip right side down and line up that center repeat for the other side of the zip so that I can put the lining on then we'll grab one of the lining pieces and place that right side facing take that to the machine so straight down this long edge here I have a one centimeter seam allowance across here so I can sew right beside my stabilizer move the slider out of the way when you get to it okay that side's done 
grab your other outer piece of fabric and then we'll place this edge of the zip directly over the top and grab your other piece of lining and we'll place that over the top again. And then we'll sew along here as well. Once we've done that we can open out the fabric. You want to separate the lining and have them both sitting behind the outer fabric and we'll top stitch along there. First we'll go and sew this in place. I spread the lining apart and the outer fabric and we can top stitch. Now this one here you can actually start sewing your top stitch from the outside edge. And same for the other side. With the top stitching done, take your out fabric pieces, bring those together and the lining and all we need to do here is sew straight down the bottom edge of the lining and the bottom edge of the outer fabric. With the lining I'm going to sew the bottom seam with a slightly larger seam allowance than the one centimetre that we've done on the other side. Just helps prevent some of that bagginess inside it. Once you've done that just take the bottom edge and press the seam to one side and you'll do the same with the other side. I've just fold it up a little bit and you can press that seam to one side. Now we can turn this the right way around and you've got a fully lined pocket piece for the inside of your bag. At the top here fold the fabric over so that the edges meet and I'll clip that in place and we'll have the seams at the bottom lining up as well. And just fold that over so that you've got the seam directly at the bottom. We'll do the same on the other side. So just make sure that's all sitting nice and evenly. And I'm going to take this back to the machine and sew these raw edges together. Now our seam allowance is one centimetre so I'm going to do half that seam allowance. Just to close these two edges up, it'll be easier to put this into our lining if we do that now. Okay, so I've just sewn the edges closed along there. And this internal pocket is now completely finished. Take your small pocket piece with your fusible interfacing on one side. Before I do anything, I'm going to pop my label in place. Then what I'll do is fold this in half with the wrong side of the fabric facing. I've got the folded edge along here. I'm going to sew down both short edges here and across the bottom and leave an opening here. Once I've done that I'll clip the corners and then I'll turn it the right way around and top stitch along the folded edge. I'll start part way across the bottom section first. And then do the same for the other side but leave an opening at the bottom. Clip the corners. And then turn it the right way around and we will top stitch. We'll just line up the folded edge at the top there and sew straight across. Let's 
just take one of our lining pieces and we'll fold that in half. I've got the center marked here. So we've got the folded edge along here and the open edge along the bottom. Find the center of your pocket and you can line up the center of your pocket with the center of your lining piece and place it wherever you feel is more comfortable for you. Keep in mind that the bottom section is going to have box corners, so that's going to come up by about four centimeters or one and a half inches. So we don't want a pocket to be finishing too low. You also don't want it too high because we've got a recessed zip at the top there. And I think I'm happy with that placement there. That is about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Pin that in place. And we'll take this to the machine. So straight down here, you want to stitch securely on the top corner here, as well as here. So straight down here, straight across and back up again. And just fold these edges under to close up that opening as you go past it. Okay, that pocket is done so we can set that aside as well. I'll just keep that with the other lining piece. And now we can work on our recessed zip. All right, I have my zip, my two outer pieces for the recessed zip and the two lining pieces as well as the tab. We've already placed our fusible stabilizer to the back of the outer fabric. And what I've also done is folded the outside edge in by one centimeter and I folded the lining pieces in by one centimeter on each end as well and they will fit directly over the top of our outer fabric so the two pieces will line up perfectly at each end. Let's take this zip now it's up to you if you want to remove your slider if you're comfortable putting them back on again you can do that and do them separately. I've got the curved edge of my slide facing my left and I'm just going to open the zip out just a little bit. You want the top edge here to be nice and even and then we're going to fold the edge under and have the zip come out to the side. And I'll repeat that for the other side and I want that fold to be even on each side. So if I just push that head down there and line up each side, you can see that this fans out evenly on each side. What I'm going to do now is just quickly take this to the machine and sew straight across here to secure those little ends. I've stitched those little corners down both sides. Double check that they're even. Let's go to the other end of our zip. Take your tab fabric and this is the longest side here. We'll place that fabric right side up, put your zip over the top and we'll center that so that you've got an even amount on both sides. I have the fabric sitting under my zip by about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch and then I've doubled that distance for my stitching line. So I'm just going to sew right across from this side of the zip to the other side of the zip. I'll quickly go and do that now. All right, the other end of the zip is closed. We've got the tab sitting behind it. Bring that around to the front, finger press that crease, then bring the tab over to the front again and fold the edges over so that it's in line with the back section of your tab. If you find that you haven't left enough room to fold your fabric over, you can trim off a little bit here. So I've just trimmed off a small amount and then my tab will fold over nice and evenly and easily to the front. First thing we want to do though is fold the side edge over. Both sides. And then you can fold these edges over. If you find it's a little bit fiddly to fold those edges in place and hold them there, double-sided tape is brilliant for that. I'll fold that edge over, that'll hold that in place. It's much easier than having to put pins or clips. 
So that's held that fabric in place there. Then all I need to do is fold the edge over at the top and then bring that in line with the other side. So now we can sew all the way around that tab. We can close that up and then our zip slider is not going anywhere. Okay, I've got my two outer pieces. I've run a strip of double-sided tape just to the top edge of each side. Where that yellow line is there is my fold. Same on that side there. I want this top edge here to line up with that fold line. I'll open my zip all the way. Working with this side here, I'm going to flip that upside down and line up this edge of the tape with that folded edge here. So when I fold that underneath, the tape won't be going beyond that. And this side here is my folded edge as well. So I'm going to sew from here all the way down to here with a back stitch at each end and secure that in place. And I'm also going to do the same for the other side. And I might as well do them both at the same time. Normally I would put the lining on at the same time as well, but I think I need to slow this down just in case anybody hasn't done this before. Fan your zip out so that it's sitting up the right way again. And then we can flip this upside down and line up that edge with the edge of your fabric. You want to try and make sure that the zip lines up on the left edge here and along the other side. We'll go and sew one side first, double check that everything's lined up properly and if it meets up then I can sew the other side. If it doesn't then I'll just reposition my zip so that it lines up. I'll take this to the machine and sew down both of these edges. Have that side flap opened out. And I'm going to stop where I've made that yellow mark or where the fold line is on my fabric. I've also come back and sewn from here across the end of the teeth just to secure that in place. I need to do the other side now but before I do that I'm going to close the zip and check my measurements. All right I've repositioned the second side just so that the two fabric pieces line up evenly and now I can sew the other side on. Before I get to the end where the teeth fold over, I'm just going to backstitch here. Sew over them. All right, we've done the top section of our zip. Now we need to do the lining. We'll open that out again. I've run a piece of tape over the top of the lining and I'll place that over the top of this section of fabric here. Again, I've got the folds open. We'll line up the side edge and all the way along the zip. And we can sew that in place in the same way we did the other side. And for this side, we'll do exactly the same. And we can sew both of those linings in place. And I'm just going to sew directly over the top of the line that I've already stitched from the other side. And the same for the other side. We need to top stitch along here, but we also need to fold these edges over. So fold that edge over on the lining as well. And make sure that the folded edge of your outer fabric and the lining meet up on the side. All right, I'm ready to go and top stitch. I've got the side edges folded under on the lining and the outer. So you can see that's folded under here. I'm going to start from the side sew that closed, 
come up along and do the top stitching come back down again and then I will just sew this section closed as well these are the raw edges I'm just going to sew that close so that they don't flop about and I'll do the same on this side I'll sew along the short side do the top stitching and come back down the other short side and close it up at the bottom Again for the other side. All right, we've got our recessed zip finished. We'll take our outer fabric, fold the fabric in half, take a nick out of it. We've got the center marked there, and I'm going to do the same on the other piece as well. And I will also find the center for my lining whilst I'm here. And we also want to find the center of our recessed zip. We'll fold it in half from the side edges here. I'm going to do that on both sides. And we also need our handles and if you've got one long length then you can just cut it into two equal pieces and these are 22 inches in length or about 55 centimeters with the front of our bag I'm going to mark four inches or 10 centimeters from the outside edge and I'll take my handle and I'll place the side edge alongside that mark I've made and same for this side I'll place it to the inside of that mark that I've made and we'll do the same for the back of our bag and then just double check you've got them in the same position on each side I'll quickly go and sew those handles in place handles are in place at the top there you want to choose which is the front and the back of your bag and this might as well be the front we'll take our recessed zip with the slider opening from left to right we're going to line up this notch here with this notch along here take one of your lining pieces and we're going to take the one that doesn't have the pocket on it and line up that notch at the top place the right sides facing And we can pin or clip that together all the way along the top edge so we'll have our recessed zip sitting on the inside like that just make sure you don't sew over the loose edge of the zip here while we're at it we might as well do exactly the same for this side rather than coming back and forth we'll grab the back of our bag we'll take the other side of the recessed zip line up those notches again Then we can grab our other lining piece, the one with the pocket on it, we'll place that right side up. Grab this lining piece and place those with right sides facing and we'll line up those notches again. We've got that all secured now too. We've got our recessed zip on the inside there we're going to sew this section together then we'll go and sew this section as well and remember we have a one centimeter seam allowance or three eighths of an inch I'm sewing over a lot of bulk where my handle is I'll go forward and then I'll go back and forward again one side done and now we can flip it around and do the other side I 
All right, we've sewn the back and the front together. We've got our handles in place, recessed zip. We do still need to do some top stitching along here, but we also need to do a few other things first. Bring your outer fabric and your lining fabric to the same side as each other. First thing we're going to do is mark out our box corners. Now, what I've done just for the purpose of showing you what I'm doing is I've marked in my seam allowance along the side and along the bottom. So my seam allowance is one centimetre or three eighths of an inch. I want to mark my box corners now and that will be four centimetres or one and a half inches. You want to take that measurement from your stitching line which is the line that I've marked around here. I've marked in my box corners on the lining here and I've also done that for the outer fabric and now we need to cut that out. Now we're getting to the fun part. I'm going to mark one inch or two and a half centimetres on each side here. We've got our recessed zip along here and that's closed on my left hand side. Take the center pocket and with the pocket closed and the zip on the left we'll line that up so that they both open from left to right. Take this edge of your pocket and line that up with that one inch or two and a half centimeter mark that we've made. So the bottom edge here lines up along here and then take this side and we're just going to scrunch this up and bring that across and line up the bottom edge with that same marking we've got over this side. So you'll see that there's a bit of a pocket in there. Take your other lining piece and place that directly over the top and we'll line up those side edges and the bottom edge. All right, what I've done here is clipped the side edges together of my outer fabric and the bottom section. For the lining, I've clipped the sides and the bottom section. I've left a large opening along the bottom here for turning the right way. And you can see that this is a little bit rippled because we've pulled in the sides by putting in that center pocket. So you just want to be careful when you're sewing that. Your zip needs to be tucked in inside and so does your handle. And we also want to make sure that our recessed zip is open at this stage. And I can tell you mine's not. So fortunately I could still get my hand in and open up that zip. This is the top section of the bag. I've just folded the side edges over to one side and I folded them to my lining side. I want the edge of the top stitching to sit on the inside of the bag when I get to it. So let's go and sew up both side seams, the bottom of the outer fabric and most of the bottom of the lining fabric. I'm doing the bottom edge of the outer fabric first. And I'll do the side seam next. Okay, I'm coming up to where the side seam is on the lining. You want to flatten out that section where you've got the internal pocket and where I've got the front and the back meeting, I'm going to triple stitch over that. And where I'm joining the center pocket to the side seam, I'm going to triple stitch over that as well. This is the bottom edge of the lining. I've probably come in in line with the pocket that I've got on the side there. Back stitch here, leave a big opening which is around about where the other side of the pocket is. That's if you're sewing from that side. And sew to the end. 
now I'm at the side seam of the lining and you can see it's all scrunched up here but what you can do is just move that lining back out of the way for the front and back until it's nice and straight and then you can sew as normal. I'm at the top of the pocket so I'll go back and forward again. And also where the front and back of the fabric meet. Make sure my zip is out of the way and my handles. Okay, everything has been sewn together. We are now up to the box corners. Then we can turn everything the right way around, do some top stitching, close up the bottom, and we're done. Let's open out the corners here. Click those in place, and I'll repeat this for all four corners. Okay, let's close up those corners. Usually when I do box corners, I generally like to double stitch them. So I will go over each one twice. All right, the corners are done. Let's turn this the right way around and see how it looks. All right, we are nearly done. You just want to make sure that you poke out all your corners. We've still got the opening at the bottom that needs to be closed up. We've got our center pocket here, which is sitting nice and freely in the center there. It's not fixed to the bottom of the bag. I didn't want that. If you do want that to happen, then when you position this into your fabric, you'll have to position it right down at the bottom where your boxing is and sew the bottom section up with one side of the uh, bottom part of the lining. I'll close up this bottom section of the opening and then while I'm at the machine, I'll have the bag inside out. We need to go and top stitch the bag, but we also want to top stitch this recessed zip down into the bag. With the handles pulled out, fold over the edge of the recessed zip to the inside of the bag. Okay, so at the moment the bag is inside out. I'm ready to close up the bottom of the bag. And I've got the recessed zip folded down to the inside of the bag. So you can see that it's folded down on this side and around this side. And the excess part of the zip is just sitting right around the edge of the bag. I've clipped the entire top edge. The outer fabric is on one side. The handles are sticking out and that recessed zip is folded over to the lining side. We're now going to go and top stitch all the way around. When I top stitch, I'm going to make it a little bit wider than I normally would because there's a lot of bulk in here. I don't want to go right at the very top, probably just over an eighth of an inch or about three or four millimeters from the edge. So top edge and close up the bottom. And to top stitch, I'm just going to start around the side seam somewhere and go all the way around. And just make sure the zip's out of the way when you get to the other side. All right, we are finally finished. 
Oh, this is the front of your bag. There's the top stitching that we've just done all the way around the bag. And by keeping the recessed zip to the inside when you do the top stitching, it helps the zip to sit inside rather than sticking up. If you wanted it to sit even further inside, you could actually increase the amount of your top stitching rather than just doing about one eighth of an inch. You might do a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. Then this flap from the recessed zip will sit further to the inside of the bag. But remember that by doing that, you're actually making the top of your bag a little bit narrower, which isn't a problem at all because when you open it out, it opens out this far anyhow. So there's loads of room in here. You've got your little internal pocket on the side there. Heaps of room to the other side. So this center pocket will flop about wherever you want it to. We've got a nice big storage space inside there as well. And that zip is completely sewn into the lining. So it's not going to come apart. I quite like this one. So what do you think? It's, um, quite, it's quite a good size bag and it's certainly going to hold plenty of um, bits and pieces inside this bag. Just looking at it after I'd finished it, I thought this would be perfect to use as a laptop bag as well. So if you had a laptop um, that you wanted to put inside, you could make your bag a few inches bigger, making sure that you can fit it inside and you wouldn't need to worry about any depth because there's enough depth in there for that. So you'd be able to put your laptop in on one side. Uh, as it is now, the bag is plenty big enough for you to put a tablet even in the center or just on one side and carry some notepads and things like that. But I think this would be a perfect craft bag as well. It'd be great for knitting. I know here in Australia, the weather's getting much cooler. So I think this would be a perfect knitting or craft bag. If you plan on making this, let me know what you'd use it for. There's a lot of elements in this bag, so I'm not going to be making these to sell. I will put a price on this one, probably about $65 or $75. I haven't decided yet. Uh, if I put $75 on it, at least I can go down in price, but I won't be able to go up if it sells too quickly. And I've got the time to wait, so I might try it at the higher price first. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.